It's Friday, October 3rd, 2013. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield, and this is episode number four of TEN Transportive Old News for the week beginning October 14th, 2013. Not content with trademarking the Tesla Model S, Tesla Model E, and Tesla Model X, those crazy folks at Tesla Motors have now trademarked the name Tesla Model X. Why? Interestingly, Tesla isn't the first car maker to use Y to donate a car model. Ford did it way back in 1932, proving that even car naming conventions like fashions eventually come back. I'm not sure if this is a concerted effort from CEO Elon Musk or Tesla ad execs, but we're sniggering like a load of prepubescent 8th graders at what those four cars' names spell out. <coughs> Sex <-sha. laughs> Technology is just so frustrating, isn't it? Especially when it comes to getting one device to play nicely with another, as Ford found out this week. As promised to owners of its Focus Electric hatchback, Ford released an update of its My Ford Touch EV app for Apple iOS devices earlier this month. To prove that it was up to date in the latest Apple tech, it even required users to upgrade to Apple's iOS 7, recently released itself, to use it. Except doing so left owners with an app which, to use eBay speak, Powered on and looked good, but did nothing else. Blaming a buggy version of the app, which was never meant to go in the App Store, Ford has removed the app and advised owners to stick with the old version of the app, and iOS 6, until the problem's been resolved. German automaker BMW admitted this week that it has so many reservations for its yet-to-launch i3 that it may have to up production to keep up with demand. According to Friedrich Eichner, BMW's chief financial officer, BMW is seriously considering upping production after receiving 8,000 reservations for the all-electric i3 and range-extended i3 Rex in Europe before its sales debut there next month. And we're not surprised. Although we were a little cool towards the i3 at first until we saw it in the flesh, closer inspection revealed a car we can't wait to get behind the wheel of. If it looks as good as it drives, BMW has a winner in the making. Talking of making, BMW only planned to build 10,000 cars in the first year of production, so we think BMW has just one choice right now, make more. Unless you've been around in the EV world for a while, you probably don't know who Martin Eberhard is, or why we're excited here at Transport Evolved that he's joined the advisory board to a little-known electric motorcycle company called BRD Motorcycles from San Francisco. So, I'll give you a quick history lesson. Back in 2003, Eberhard co-founded a small Silicon Valley automotive company determined to build a super sexy, sleek, fast electric sports car, and that company was Tesla Motors. Now, while Eberhard left Tesla Motors in 2008, after a boardroom battle with now CEO Elon Musk, Eberhard hasn't lost his interest in super fast EVs, which is where BRD Motorcycles comes in. Primarily focused on lightweight dirt bikes and high-performance street machines, BRD Motorcycles is on the lookout for a battery expert to help it build super lightweight, energy-dense battery packs from the same sort of small-capacity laptop-style batteries used in the Tesla Roadster. BRD's current bikes, the Redshift MX and the Redshift SM, already hit 60 miles an hour in a Tesla-like 3.3 seconds. With Eberhard's help, the BRD Motorcycles could probably get awesome range too. It seems there isn't a week that goes by without Tesla Motors unveiling some new store or supercharger somewhere in the world, and last weekend was no exception. But instead of being on a far-flung shore, Tesla's latest store was in its home turf of Palo Alto, the same Bay Area city where Tesla HQ is located. It's no surprise then that this particular launch event came with an extra surprise, in the form of its latest prototype for the all-electric Model X. Due sometime towards the end of next year, the Model X, based on a Model S chassis, combines seating for seven adults, an expected range of 250 plus miles, and optional four-wheel drive. Oh, and we mustn't forget those Falcon Wing doors, which probably make it the most trendy SUV on the market today. That's if you like doors which go up and fold instead of ones which do their usual boring dory thing. It's time to play pretend. You're an automaker wanting to test a new, improved battery pack in the wild. Do you take it out on the public highway in an existing EV model, or enter said car for a racing series designed to reward energy efficiency? Or perhaps you're part of Nissan's elite engineering team and you want to spend your spare time seeing just what would happen if you added another battery pack to a stock Nissan LEAF, giving twice the battery capacity and, potentially, twice the range. Regardless of which story is, in fact, more accurate, a team of engineers from Nissan's technical centre in Barcelona recently entered a Nissan LEAF with a 48 kilowatt hour battery pack into the final race of the Spanish-based Eco Series Marathon. 
While it didn't win the race, coming a close second to a Mercedes-Benz A-Class E-Cell, the Leaf XL, as we want to call it, might just hint that Nissan is considering a larger, more capable battery pack to future model Leafs. Dare we hope that a 48 kilowatt hour Leaf is in the pipeline? It's too early to say, but we think a 48 kilowatt hour Leaf should be able to travel 180 miles or more per charge. That's twice the current generation Leaf. Nissan, if you're watching, go on, make it, please. I know you want to. Is your home EV ready? Or more appropriately, is your garage? Some states, like California, are trying to make new build homes come pre-wired for electric car charging stations. But over on the East Coast, a Virginia-based construction firm isn't gonna wait around for legislation to build you a home with an EV ready garage. Enter Capital City Builders who announced this week that all new homes it builds from this point onwards will come pre-wired with a socket in the garage for EV charging. The power outlet will allow homeowners to nip down to their local home improvement store and buy an off-the-shelf charging station to plug right in. And yes, I am talking about 240 volts. A few years ago, the same firm made Category 6 cabling, that's essentially data and voice cabling, standard in all its new builds. And in a few years, it says EV charging will be as standard as a garbage disposal unit. Way to go, Capital City Builders, we hope you're right. And some major EV kudos to you. Let's hope your competitors don't catch on quite as fast if you get all those EV owners buying your houses. Do you remember the Kia Soul EV? The one we enthusiastically told you about a few weeks ago and said was gonna be on sale sometime next year. At that time, Kia hadn't released specifications on pricing, leading us to hope that perhaps, just perhaps, Kia would be bringing a sensibly priced, affordable EV to the market. But uh, now that's looking less likely after a UK executive at Kia told reporters this week that the Soul EV would not be priced to stimulate demand and adding that Kia wouldn't be selling hundreds of the vehicle. In other words, Kia is selling the Soul EV as a limited market, limited production EV, just like so many that went before. <sighs> Can you say compliance car? Yeah, two stories in a week about iPhones and electric cars. We're sorry. We really are, but this story is one about an iPhone which wants to work with your car. Enter Siri Eyes Free, Apple's attempt to work with automakers to make Apple's voice recognition service work seamlessly with onboard audio systems. Built directly into Apple's latest operating system, iOS 7, it provides a way to interact with your phone while driving without taking your hands off the wheel or your eyes off the road. It lets you change your music playlists, text a friend or set the sat-nav, and much, much more. In the past few months, we've seen more and more automakers jump on the Siri Eyes Free integration bandwagon, but now the 2014 Chevy Volt has joined the growing list of cars, which will happily play nicely with Apple's virtual assistant, joining the Nissan Leaf, which is already on the list. Then again, just because the 2014 Volt works with iOS 7 and Series i3 right now, don't expect it to always work. I've got a 2011 Nissan Leaf, which has played quite happily with Apple products until iOS 7. Now it won't display any track information when I plug my phone into the car's USB socket, and sometimes it doesn't even recognize there's a phone there at all. The best solution? Turn your phone off and stick in a good old fashioned CD player. You won't be so distracted. But if you can't get by on a trip without talking to your phone, at least you have now got an option to do so hands-free. Have you ever wondered what Elon Musk's dream car would be? I mean, he's the CEO of Tesla Motors, which makes electric cars, and he's also the CEO of SpaceX, which sends things into space in rockets. So what would you say if I said he'd just purchased the 1977 Spy Who Loved Me submarine car, and rumor has it, wants to put a Tesla drivetrain in it? Yes, Elon Musk was the winning bidder of an $866,000 auction for the famous iconic underwater Lotus. I wonder what he's gonna do with it. Will he turn it into an underwater Tesla car for his super, super cool underwater home that no one knows he has? Or maybe he's just got a thing about being James Bond. He is a Gen Xer after all. Better get money, Penny. That's it for the week. Don't forget to join us next week for another episode of TEN. And in the meantime, do visit www.transportyourold.com for all the EV news that's fit to print. Subscribe to our channel and other shows on YouTube and join us live on Sunday when we'll be discussing these and other stories on Transport Evolved. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bluefield and until next time, stay juiced up.
if you like doors which go up and fold instead of ones which do their usual boring dory thing.